Good afternoon and welcome to today's very, very special program on the occasion of World Diabetes Day, Diabetes Can Be Reversed. My name is Reina Rupani. I'm part of the Sharan team from Mumbai. Sharan uh, is an acronym. It stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And it was founded by Dr. Nandita Shah, who is a pretty unique doctor because whenever you go to her, she only prescribes food, never prescribes medicine. Have you ever got a prescription from a doctor who only gives you food as medicine? And I have been working with Sharon for the past six years and I've seen thousands and thousands of people reverse and prevent their diseases simply through a change of diet. I personally lost 17 kilos. My parents' diabetes and blood pressure medicine stopped in 21 days. And it's been five years. They're 75 plus. And I'm so proud to say that they are on zero medication. Coming to Dr. Nandita Shah, um, she is uh, the author of this amazing book called Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. Though I'm not a diabetic, I read the book and it's just amazing even for a lay person to just understand what changes you need to make uh, to live a life full of health and energy and happiness. And... Um, she is also a Nari Shakti Puraskar awardee. Nari Shakti Puraskar is the highest civilian award given to women in our country. And she received this by our honorable president. So I don't want to take much time because I'm sure you're keen to listen to her and understand that diabetes may no longer be a life sentence. You don't need to have the medicines all your life. It can be reversed and you can actually live a life without any insulin and without any medicine. So I would like, without much ado, to call Dr. Nandita Shah and let's hear some amazing timeless wisdom from her. Over to you, doctor, thank you. Thank you, Reina, it's so lovely to have you introduce me. And I'm so happy to be here on this very special day. I wish there was no such day as World Diabetes Day, but it has become a day because so many people are getting diabetes. And you know, today is also Children's Day. And the sad part of it is that children are also getting diabetes these days. That's why I really think that this is so very important a subject. Okay, so Rena already told you about Sharon. Sharon was started in 2005. And Sharon's vision was actually to reverse all diseases, but we focused on diabetes and a diabetes-free India only because diabetes is one of the most common lifestyle diseases in India and it's the easiest to reverse. I just came back from our 21 day retreat. Uh, it's hardly two weeks. And even there we had several patients who had diabetes some of them were on a number of medications. One of them was on 20 medications and he left with just four. What I mean by medications is not 20 different medications, but 20 doses a day. So tell me if you want to prevent or reverse diabetes, can you tell me why you want to prevent and reverse diabetes? Okay, so I understand that, you know, medicines have complications and to avoid the complications and what kind of complications are you facing to prevent long-time adverse effects and scared of complications later agreed and what kind of complications are you fearing right pain in the foot and um, yes it invites other diseases and heart attack and kidney failure and gangrene and kidney issues and true and it affects the eyes and so on. Yes, this is all so true. And muscle pain, yes. What else happens when you have diabetes? Blindness and blurry vision and hearing issues and neuropathy and frozen shoulder, all of this is true. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you what other people responded. They said that diabetes causes weakness and lethargy and sleepiness. Have you experienced this? And of course, joint pains and medicines didn't work. And um, 
you know, and blood sugar keeps going up. Just one sec. And the fear that other organs will not work as you explain. And somebody said that PCOD and hypothyroidism and diabetes, these are all hormonal problems and they often come together with diabetes. And when they come together, it even has a name. It's called metabolic syndrome. And someone said, I've seen other family members suffering from diabetes, yes, and ulcers and medicine toxicity and kidney failure is the worst and neuropathy. And one of the early symptoms is erectile dysfunction. Sometimes erectile dysfunction comes even before diabetes. For example, in our 21 day retreat, we had a young man who had diabetes and had erectile dysfunction for the last 10 years and weight gain. So complications of diabetes are so many that we can avoid if we just take care of it right now. So whether you have diabetes or whether you are on medications or whether you're just trying to prevent it, let's all get into action. Now, there's another reason why diabetes should be reversed. Diabetes is costly. Costly in terms of medicines, in terms of the cost of insulin. I've seen patients who are spending more than 17,000 a month just on medications for diabetes. 17,000 rupees, I mean. And I know that there are people from all over the world. So I meant 17,000 rupees and that's a fair amount. And then there are you know, people who are feeling too tired, sleepy after every meal and frequent illnesses because diabetes just makes your immune system go down and you can catch infections more easily just because the sugar is in the blood and bacteria are attracted to the sugar. And so you can get you know, illnesses thanks to the bacteria that are attracted. And we spoke about the complications, but it's also the dependence on medicine. And we're soon going to talk about that as well. The current approach when someone gets diabetes is that they go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes them a diet. The diet is don't eat sugar and don't eat carbohydrates. And we all know this. Maybe some of them say don't eat fruits, definitely not bananas. I have my patients who hesitate to have a green smoothie or have bananas in the morning just because they're scared of diabetes and blood sugars going up. And then they are given medicines. And not only that, they're often told that this is going to be their lifelong. Have you heard this too? You can type in the chat box. Okay, and I see some other answers also. The general recovery is longer and amputations. Yes, all of those. Okay, and I will be telling you what to eat as well. Hmm? Okay. So have you noticed that medicines never cure? Like nobody gets cured of diabetes with medicines. Isn't that true? But our body's always working to heal. And we know this because if you get a fever or um, even an injury or a fracture, our body heals even without medicines. Do you know that we have a COVID desk and we are treating patients who had COVID and we've been treating for quite a while and we treat without any medicines and we have got 100% results so far. Actually, sometimes the medicines come in the way of cure. Now, is it really possible to reverse diabetes? And I really want to promise you that it's true for most cases. And we have plenty of testimonials on our YouTube channel that you can see. Many of those testimonials were taken at the end of our 21-day retreat. So you can actually see the results in just 21 days. 
the reason we have so many testimonials at the end of 21 days is because we're there and with a camera. But there are people like you who can reverse diabetes after one month or two months. Sometimes it takes longer. And truly, the more you do, the more you get. And I'm going to be telling you today some of the things that you could change to see the results. Now, this was one of our clients at the 21 day retreat. And he took this video of himself in the toilet on, on the second week of the retreat. Let's watch. My one week of medicines. So this was Mr. Manohar Shetty. He's the owner of Sai Vishram Hotel in Electronic City, Bangalore. And he went back and opened a new restaurant, Prakriti Ahara, just because he saw the results in such a short period of time. That means if he can do it, so can you. We can actually get rid of all these medications and get well. Now, we must work on reversal because diabetes is easy to assess. You just need a glucometer and you can check your levels so you know exactly how you're doing. You don't even need the help of a doctor. And some medicines have very serious side effects. Of course, all the medicines have side effects. Even metformin, which is the simplest medicine and which I try to bring all my patients back on before they stop medicines, has complications that it reduces the vitamin B12 and it also has effects on the liver, fatty liver, um, if you take it for a long time. But there are some medicines, the sulfonylurea group, which include glimiparide and glycoside and some of the names are Amaryl and um, Glycomet GP1 and GP2 and so on and so forth. They come, these medicines are often combined with other medicines. And these medicines are so dangerous because taking these medicines over a long period of time, these medicines force your pancreas to produce more insulin and eventually the pancreas burn out. So for the doctor, it's very easy. They give you these sulfonylureas and you get amazing results. It's as if you're on insulin. But after some time, the pancreas burns out and you go back to the doctor with high blood sugar. And then the doctor says, now you need insulin. And there are a lot of people who are on insulin then, even though they didn't start out with insulin. So it's not a true case of type 1 diabetes. I do want to mention, since I mentioned type 1 diabetes, that you know most cases of type 2 diabetes can be reversed. And many cases of type 1 diabetes can be reversed, but type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease and it takes a much longer period of time. However, the insulin dosage for type 1 diabetes can reduce to one third or half in a very short period of time. Maybe... Um, a couple of weeks or three weeks, you can get a huge improvement. Now, this is Dr. Neil Barnard and his book, Dr. Neil Barnard's Program for Reversing Diabetes. And he came to India and spoke all over um, in different uh, cities and in different hospitals about how diabetes could be reversed. And you would have thought that everyone would want to reverse diabetes, but it's not like that because there's too much money in sickness. You know, hospitals run on sick people. And so it's really great if we always focus on health and never land in the hospital. Now, in order to reverse any lifestyle disease, it requires a change in lifestyle. How many of you are willing to do whatever it takes to reverse diabetes? Please type into the chat box.
Okay, great. So I want to assure you that most of you can get fabulous results. Okay. It's sometimes it's not possible. I told you that if someone has taken glimiparide and glicolazide or some sulfonylurea for a long period of time and they get onto insulin, then it depends. But most people can. And even many of those who have got onto insulin can. Okay. So we are going to work on it together and get the results. Now, if you want to reverse any disease, can you tell me what would you do? Just type into the chat box. What would you have to do if you wanted to reverse a disease? Okay, eat a natural diet, Abhinaya. And yes, you all know that you're here for diet and exercise and so on. But truly, and change of mindset, that is really true. And yes, somebody wrote, Arun from Hyderabad wrote, find the root cause, Manish wrote. Manish, some of you have started writing. Find the root cause. And Pradeep, you don't need a strong will to change. You just need a will to change, right? It's really easy, I want to assure you. The minute you start, you know, we are creatures of habit. We resist any change. But once you get into the change, it's really easy. So usually when we go to the doctor, doctors are only treating symptoms, right? Like uh, you have diabetes, doctor gives you medicine to bring down blood sugar. But they never work at the level of cause. Sugar or fruit is not the cause of diabetes. High blood sugar is the result of diabetes. The cause of diabetes is insulin resistance or lack of insulin, right? And so if we want to get rid of diabetes, we have to look at what is the cause of insulin resistance. And that's what we're going to discuss today. What is the cause of insulin resistance? So what is the real cause of diabetes? It's insulin resistance. And we have to work on those causes. Now, what happens with insulin resistance? Let me explain a little bit about diabetes. Insulin is like a key. This is a muscle cell that you're seeing. And the muscles need sugar to enter so that sugar provides energy so that the muscles can move. If the sugar doesn't reach the muscles, then you feel weakness. This is common in diabetes. And all the sugar in the, blood, in the blood has to be taken out and it has to be diluted. So you have more thirst and more urination. These are the three typical symptoms of diabetes. Weakness, increased thirst, and frequent urination. Obviously, this is before you start any medicine. So it's because the sugar is remaining in the bloodstream because the insulin that should work like a key and open the door to the muscle cell in order to let the glucose in, that insulin key is either deficient or it doesn't work. And why does it not work? That means if it doesn't work, it's insulin resistance. And why does it not work? Because of fat inside the muscle cell. Here you can see the word intramyocellular lipid. Lipid means fat, intra means inside, myocellular, muscle cell. Intramyocellular lipid or fat inside the muscle cell prevents the insulin from working and we have diabetes. Am I being clear up to now? Please type in the chat box if you're understanding what I'm saying. Okay, one, one sec. I can't open the chat box just now. Yes, uh, doctor. Everybody okay, speaking. fabulous. Yeah. Okay, so the main cause of diabetes is fat. Fat inside the muscle cell. And where is that coming from? It's coming from the fat in our body and the fat we're eating. Where is the fat we're eating? It's in the oil, ghee, butter, vanaspati or margarine. 
and it's also in all animal products. Have you noticed that if you boil milk, you get fat on top, you boil chicken, you get fat on top, you boil fish, you get fat on top, you boil meat, you get fat on top. It's also in any ready-made products because fat is one of the preservatives. Okay, so there's so many foods that are full of fat. For example, in this image, you see cheese. And cheese is a concentrated form of milk. It's 70% fat. Now, don't get scared. I know that, you know, we're resistant to change and it's scary to drop all these things, but just hold on. I'm going to make it really easy for you. And I'm sure that if you make some changes, you will start seeing the results. And that's so exciting that you will want to do more. So the main causes of diabetes, the number one cause is fat. But have you noticed that even peanuts have fat and sesame has fat and coconut has fat, all of this has fat. However, if you boil peanuts, you don't get fat on top or sesame or coconut. Do you know why? Because they contain fiber. Now, as long as there's fiber in the food that we eat, the fiber holds on to the fat. It doesn't let it go straight into the bloodstream. It doesn't go straight to the muscle cells. It does not cause insulin resistance. Therefore, we can eat foods like avocado or um, peanuts or sesame or nuts. We can eat these because they have fiber. Now, only plants have fiber. There is no fiber in animal products. So if we want to eat something that was from the animal kingdom that we were eating before, like milk or cheese or butter or fish or chicken, we just have to substitute. And then diabetes is a hormonal problem. And you know, all our hormones are orchestrated by a gland at the back of our brain it's called the pituitary gland. And when one hormone goes out of balance, the others go out of balance, which is why people get hypothyroidism and PCOD and diabetes and infertility and all kinds of problems that are hormonal together. Now, one of the reasons that we have hormonal problems is because our body is receiving hormones from outside. And where are these hormones coming from outside? From animal products. Animals like us produce hormones. And when these hormones enter our body, it makes the imbalance. This is another reason why we have to stop all animal products. Also, vitamin D is a hormone. And if vitamin D is deficient, we can also get diabetes. And chemicals. Chemicals are hormone disruptors. And where are all the chemicals coming from? They're coming from the pesticides in the food or the packaged food with the preservatives. They're also coming from, say, our toothpaste or chemicals that we're using in our lives. For example, did you know that if you put something on your skin, it's absorbed from your skin within about 26 seconds? That means all those soaps and shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and talcum powder and hand sanitizers and cosmetics and hair dyes and shaving cream and all of these things have the potential to add chemicals to our body. Somebody spoke about kidney failure and you know, everything that we put in our body has to be broken down by the liver and excreted by the kidneys and all these chemicals are damaging to both these systems, but also they cause diabetes. So when we have diabetes, we should minimize the chemicals. And I shouldn't forget to mention the chemicals that we breathe in. Of course, the pollution in the air, but you know, the sprays that we're using, the window cleaners and the toilet cleaners and the perfume sprays and the um, you know, the floor cleaners and agarbattis and pesticide and 
air fresheners and all of those things. And then stress. Stress is a big cause of diabetes as well as lack of exercise and lack of rest. Our body only heals during rest. So there's no point in doing too much exercise and not getting your sleep. At the same time, there's no point in not doing exercise at all, right? And one of the things about exercise is that it relieves stress. But here's the thing that, you know, we have to also work on the stress. Most people are stressed. Are anyone in this audience stressed? Has anyone experienced stress in this audience? You can write in the chat box. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay, I see. Okay, so you're just like me and all of us. And we will, we also talk about how to reduce the stress and believe it or not, stress can also be reduced by the right food, truly. Okay. And then lack of vitamin D, I told you that. And tea, coffee, colas, alcohol, smoking, all of these cause diabetes. Uh, tea and coffee actually, and colas, and alcohol and smoking, they actually raise the blood sugar. Now, I still want to let you know that this is really easy because, you know, in our 21 day retreat, everyone was just like you. They were having tea or coffee or smoking. Not, there were not so many smokers this time, but uh, having alcohol or colas and so on. And they all did it. And it was really easy. So it will be easy for you too. Now, a few things that are not the causes, but people believe they are fruit. You can have as much fruit as you want. So remember that even though a few things are getting taken away, there are few amazing things that are coming mangoes and chikus and sitaphal and even grapes and whatever fruit you want, you can have as much fruit as you want. And then whole carbohydrates like potato and brown rice and all these things are not going to be taken away. You can have as much of them as you want. So as I told you, it's going to be easy. You're just going to have to you know, switch a few things, but it's going to be really easy. And not eating frequently. I know that some doctors say that you have to eat every two hours. And this is not true. Look, all we have to do is eat when we're hungry, right? Not hungry, don't eat. Don't start eating in the morning just because it's breakfast time. Eat only when your body says it's hungry and we will start getting results. So when I said eat as much fruit as you want, I do want to mention that this does not mean fruit juice because in fruit juice, the fiber is taken away. Remember that we want everything as whole as possible. And I do want to say a word about milk. And that's just because many of you, like me, may have been brought up thinking that milk is the best food for human beings. Right, milk is a complete food, but it's really not true. And when I say milk, I mean milk, cheese, buttercream, paneer, ice cream, curds, buttermilk, everything that's made of milk, including biscuits, right? Because milk contains the following factors. Number one, fat, lack of fiber, hormones, pesticides, Pesticides, why? Because most of the cows are not given organic food. And, uh, you know, one in order to get one liter of milk, a cow would eat 12 to 16 kilos of grain. So the pesticides are getting concentrated in the milk. And lack of fiber and stress hormones. I really want to mention something about these stress hormones. When we are stressed, we produce adrenaline. 
When animals are stressed, they produce adrenaline. Now, I'm lucky that I live in a village and I see everything all around me. But honestly, no matter in which city you, you live, you can see it if you keep your eyes open. So, you know, cows are artificially inseminated in order that they get pregnant so that they'll produce milk. Their babies are taken away from them and tied up. The babies never get their share of milk and every mother produces only the amount of milk that their baby needs. And so the babies, especially if they're male calves, they go hungry and go to make calf leather. And the female calves, they are usually starving. So can you imagine being a mother and having a baby and not being allowed to feed your baby and your milk being taken away from you as in stolen and sold in the market. Your legs are tied, you can't do anything. This is stress. And this stress manifests as adrenaline in the cow. And this adrenaline comes back to us through the milk. It's the same with chickens. They are stressed when they're gonna be slaughtered one after another and the same with all the animals in our food chain. And therefore, eating animals always causes stress. Now, there's one more thing about milk. Milk contains a growth factor called IGF or insulin-like growth factor. And this takes the place of insulin on the receptor, on the muscle cell and you know, it's like putting the wrong key into the keyhole. Have you ever put the wrong key into the keyhole? Have you seen that you put in the key and then you turn it and the door doesn't open, nor does the key come out and you're really stuck? That's what IGF does in our body. And so when people consume milk, they get insulin resistance because the insulin which is there cannot take its place on the receptors, it cannot open the lock because it's stuck with the IGF. And that's why it's so important that we stop consuming all forms of milk for this, right? Here you see the diagram again and you can see the insulin receptors and imagine if they were all blocked up with IGF. Now, what is the logic behind all this dietary guidelines? You know, we've been brought up thinking that we're omnivores and we've been taught this by our culture and society and advertisements. And we often never ask ourselves, is this really true? So let's look at it now. Imagine if you had a cow, you would feed it grass. And if you had a lion, you would feed it meat. And when it comes to us, we don't know what to eat because we've been told that we're omnivores. But all animals eat by instinct. And imagine if you were to go to a farm or orchard and you see these fruits and vegetables, what do you feel like doing? Plucking and eating, of course, right? I'm not going to start the chat box for this because I know the answer that you're going to say. But if you see a chicken walk by, or a goat, or a cow, does your mouth water? Please answer in the chat box. Right. And even if you're non-vegetarian, does your mouth water? No. Why not? Because we, even the non-vegetarians amongst us, cannot pounce on a chicken or a goat or a cow and tear it apart and we cannot eat it raw, right? Because like a true omnivore or a true carnivore, we don't have those appendages. Now whose mouth would salivate if they saw this chicken walk by? Can you tell me in the chat box?
Yes, animal. And somebody, Abhinay said a dog. And true, a dog or a fox, because a dog or a fox can pounce on the animal, tear it apart, and, um, and eat it. And Shilpa, I've seen your hand up, but I'm going to hold on. And uh, we'll be having a whole session of questions at the end. So imagine if you saw a plate like this, maybe your mouth would water, especially if you're a non-vegetarian. And that's because we've been conditioned to have this, right? Even though it's not our food, we have in our um, culture been conditioned to milk and, you know, even milk is not our food, right? When you see a cow's udders, your mouth doesn't water. And if you see green fields of wheat and rice, does your mouth water? Please answer in the chat box. No. Imagine that even when we see wheat and rice, our mouth doesn't water. Perhaps we feel good because it's green and it looks lovely, but our mouth doesn't water. And that's because truly, truly wheat and rice is not our food and we cannot eat it raw. So whose mouth would water if they saw wheat and rice growing? Please answer in the chat box. True, Asha and so many of you, a cow, right? A cow's mouth could water because this is cow food and the grains are bird food, but it's not our food. So the perfect food for us is the food that we could potentially eat in the raw form. Almost all the fruits and vegetables. And you may be surprised because we're so used to cooking certain vegetables like um, lady fingers or okra or um, potatoes and so on, but you can actually eat these vegetables raw as well. Now, if you look at the teeth of a carnivore and if you look at the teeth of herbivores, and then if you look at the teeth of true omnivores, and now if you look at your own teeth, you can see that even though we have some teeth called canines, we don't have true canines that can pounce on an animal and tear it apart. And when it comes to milk, we know very well that every mammal produces milk only for their young and we are not calves. And no animal drinks another animal's milk in nature. That means goats don't drink pig's milk and monkeys don't drink elephant's milk. And we are the only species that drinks another animal's milk. But instinctively, we are not attracted to milk. Every baby loves their mother's milk. But when they're first given cow's milk, do they appreciate? No, right? But mothers add sugar and cocoa and force it down their baby's throats. And we are being manipulated by advertising all the time. And I have a simple formula of what to eat and what not to eat. Because advertising costs a lot. Right? So how do we know what to eat? Just simple, never eat something that needs to be advertised. Because what is in our instinct will never be advertised to us. Have you ever seen advertisements for carrots and cucumbers or apples and oranges? No. But do we see advertisements for eggs and milk and chicken and so many other things? We do. So these are the things that we should avoid. So our simple formula is eat plant-based foods. Number two, eat food just the way animals would, as in whole, not refined. Don't take out the fiber. We take out the fiber when we consume oil or sugar or white rice or white flour. And we have fabulous replacements for all of these and you know, we in our 21 day retreat and in our cooking classes, we make bhajjas and pakoras and all this pav vada and whatever you have eaten, we make it all 
but we make it by baking or other techniques rather than frying. And um, instead of sugar, we use dates and raisins and so on. And you know, we're the only animal that sprays our food with poison so that other animals don't eat it. And then we eat it. How crazy is that? And the reason we eat it is because we're not there when the spraying is done. But what we really should do is eat organic because we already discussed that chemicals are hormone disruptors and diabetes is a hormonal problem. Now, all we need to do is have plant-based, whole and organic foods. And you can learn how to do this simply by our basic cooking classes or some of our other cooking classes. And if we follow nature or God's guidelines on eating, the body heals. It always heals. So Sharon has a five point plan, plant-based, whole, organic, vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Vitamin B12 and D can be deficient in anybody and everybody because of our artificial lifestyle. And you can learn more about these if you go to our website and go on to try vegan in the menu and look up vitamin B12 and D. It's given in great detail. So we have to check and supplement these two. Never take excess. Remember, vitamin D is a hormone and excess of hormone can also cause harm. Now, someone is asking, what is a good meal plan? Give me a good meal plan. So here goes for you. When you wake up, instead of tea and coffee, switch to herbal teas. And if you don't like them, just have water with lime juice. Lime juice has, um, or lime or lemon, this has vitamin C and it's fabulous to, you know, improve your immunity. And then only when you're hungry, have breakfast. And breakfast should be a green smoothie and fruit. And how to make green smoothies, it's on our website under recipes and also in our YouTube channel. And green smoothies is really one of the most delicious things that you may have ever had. Even little children love them. And I do want to say one thing, you may be spending five or 10 minutes to make your breakfast, but green smoothies never takes more than five minutes to make. And then in case you're hungry between breakfast and lunch, you could have idli, dosa, poha, chilla, wraps, parathas, but they need to be made using our techniques and using whole grain. For example, if you make poha, it would be red rice poha. Or if it's idli, you could make red rice and whole udad dal idlis or even millet idlis and dosas. Now lunch, lunch should be, remember all animals eat their food raw. So at least we should start eating more raw. One fourth of the meal should be salad. No more than one fourth should be a grain. And then you could have vegetable, dal or whatever else you like, right? Remember to keep the cow food to a minimum. No more than one fourth of the meal is grain. No less than one fourth of the meal is salad. And then snack would be green smoothie and fruit. Again, if you love it as much as I do, though I don't have snacks at all, but you could have it or you could have a sprout chart or chole chart or aloo chart or sweet potato chart, or you could have, there are a whole list of other snacks in the recipe sections on our website. And dinner, dinner would be something similar to lunch. You could have a salad, one fourth of the meal should be salad and no more than one fourth grain. And the rest could be dal or vegetables or soup or pizza or pasta. But remember, everything should be made with whole foods and ideally organic foods. Now tell me, does this look doable? Please write into the chat box. Does this look doable? 
Okay, is there anyone who finds this not doable? Please write in the chat box, can't do. Just write can't do if you really feel it's not doable. Okay, Bala, you said 50%, no problem. You know what? Even if we can't change everything overnight, change 50% and then the next 50% and then the next 50% and it'll be really simple. And we are there to help you. Okay? So I'm going to show you how we can help you. Now, reversing disease requires a shift in consciousness from a culture of disease. We are in a culture of disease to a culture of a health. It's a whole shift in cultures. And I have to admit that I cannot make this shift in you in just one short talk. And so we have other programs to help you, which I'll soon tell you about. But let me summarize everything that we've done so far. One is medicines never cure, right? We know this, not just diabetes, but someone who has hypertension. And honestly, even if someone has COVID, did you know that there's no medicine for a viral disease? And then... Fruits and whole carbohydrates are not bad for diabetes. That means we can have, it opens up a whole new range of foods, yummy foods. And then fat in any form is dangerous. So we can teach you how to cook without fat. And truly, it doesn't take longer. It's actually faster. The biggest enemy is milk only because it's white and we start believing that it's great. But it is, it actually causes a lot of uh, diabetes. So whoever said 50% or whoever said I can't change everything, here's what I advise you to do. First step, just drop all the milk and milk products, all the dairy, okay? Everything else is okay. Even if you're having a little bit of non-veg, it's okay. That will be the second step. But stop all the milk. Now, if you could stop all the milk and all the non-veg, even if you don't do the other things, you will start seeing a difference. Animal products are full of fat, right? So the first things we're going to do is stop the milk, stop the animal products, and minimize the fat. If you can't cook without oil, minimize the oil, get 50% of the results, and then we'll get to 100%. And minimize the chemicals that you're using in your home and reduce the stress. That could be by making some changes in your lifestyle, by stopping all the animal products, of course, and checking and supplementing vitamin D and making sure that you're getting enough exercise and no lack of sleep. Now, how can we help you? We have plenty of things. Remember, our mission is a diabetes-free India and a diabetes-free world. So we have plenty of things. One is we have a 21-day online diabetes reversal program. And this is great, for, especially for people who don't have diabetes yet or have pre-diabetes or are, have diabetes but are not yet on medications. Then you will be taught in a step-by-step -step manner over 21 days through videos and text how to reverse diabetes. It's really simple and it can be done. And this program you can get for three months or two months. So you can learn this over three or two months. Then there's my book, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days, which I highly recommend because it has all the information all packed in one place. It's easy to read and you can always refer to it later. Then we have consultations with our doctors, and if you're not on medication, even with our nutritionists. And this is really good for people who are on medicines because if you're on medicines, how can you reduce the medicines without individualized consultations? 
And this is where we really help you. And then we have cooking classes, which are lots of fun and always full. And we have so many different cooking classes that help you learn how to reverse diabetes and how to reverse any disease for that matter, how to cook without oil, how to make fabulous desserts, how to make Diwali treats and Christmas treats and all of that. And then we have seminars and workshops. And I'm going to tell you about a few of the seminars and workshops that I'm going to be conducting in the next days and tell you a little bit about them so that you can decide if it's something for you. Number one, 10 steps to a life without medicine. That's next weekend and it's two half days and it really prepares you for a complete life without medicines. That means no matter which complaints you have or whether you want to get your family members healthy or your friends healthy or you're a doctor or a nutritionist and you want to treat your patients, this is for you. It's an overall plan. Then reversing diabetes and hypertension, which is on 4th and 5th December. And the reason that these two are clubbed together is because so many people who have diabetes also have hypertension. And truly many of the causes are similar. And so you can learn all about this all in one shot. And you know, the um, one of the precursors to both diabetes and hypertension is erectile dysfunction in men. And even this can be reversed. That means all the complications almost of diabetes and hypertension can be reversed. And hypertension and heart disease and stroke all come together. So all of these diseases, this is a special seminar for that. And that's also over two half days. And both these seminars are online, which means that you can actually access them from no matter where you are. And for most of our online programs, we do have recordings, but for these we don't because, because they're more individualized. There's a lot of, there is not a lot, but there is some degree of interaction so that everybody gets the results. And this is especially for doctors and nutritionists. We have a consultation training program to help doctors and nutritionists do the best kind of consultations in order to get the results. And we have a facilitator training program as well for all those who are already following this lifestyle and want to share it and help other people get well. I also want to say that my book, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days, has been translated into a Gujarati and it has also been translated into Hindi. And we're just proofreading it right now and it will soon be available as well. And you can also download our recipe books for free. They are available already. And uh, you can just go to our website, go to About Us, where you'll see publications, and you can download them. Now, before I end, I do want to show you around our website very quickly. So this is our homepage. And if you go here to About Us, and then go to Publications, you can get our free downloads. If you go here to the Recipes section, you can see all our fabulous recipes. And if you go to our health program section and go to consultation, you can avail of our consultations or you can even avail of them through the homepage here. Now, if you want to see just the events for reversing diabetes, you could click on this on our homepage. Or if you want to see events for health without medicine, you could click on this. But you could also go and view all the events and see many of them. And here you would find our 21 day diabetes reversal program. Or if you want a shorter program, then this is our whole plant-based basics cooking online certificate course 
where you can learn the techniques for oil-free and dairy-free cooking so that you are never deprived. And these are um, pre-recorded online programs that you will get for a month or the 21-day online program is for two months or three months so that you can definitely get the results. But beyond that, we have lots more events that are always available so that you can learn how to cook. For example, Ande Ka Funda, how you can get, how you can make egg alternatives or brownies and frosting, how you can make really healthy desserts without any sugar and of course, without any dairy product. So that was just a quick um, thing I wanted to show you. So I just want to thank everyone and I hope that there will be a day where we will not have World Diabetes Day because everybody will understand that it is so simple and so doable and so delicious to be healthy. And I can vouch for it. My parents had diabetes and hypertension and I'm so happy that they are not on any medication. They are, they are 70 plus. So thank you, Dr. Nandita, for sharing this amazing knowledge with us. So thank you, everybody. And let's really, really together build a culture of health because right now we are in culture of disease and it's so easy to be healthy if all we knew it. Okay. So thank you. All the best and bye-bye. Bye-bye from all of us at Shana. Thank you, Reina, for all the things you did and I know how much it is. So thank you for that. Thank you, doctor. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.